On this episode of Oz Off-Road TV, we are in the Victorian high country. We'll check out the Blue Rag Track, suss out one of Australia's older cemeteries, cross a few creeks, have a beer or two at the Dargo pub, and we'll take on the infamous Billy Goat Track. How's your sleep? Yeah, all right. It was a bit chilly. It is a bit cold this morning. A little bit, yeah. Have you got your coffee on yet? No. Mm. Got the duck's water on first. Yeah. Age before beauty. <laughs> You're so selfless. <laughs> I know. Good morning. Good morning. You ready for a big day? Big day. Yeah. Biggest day. Where's our sun going? We might find it where we're going. We're heading towards it, I think. So we're going up in the clouds. <laughs> Bit of coffee this morning. Yeah. Get me up and ready. How's your sleep in your rooftop? Yeah, good. Absolutely fabulous. Not too cold? No. What's happening, Dark? Oh, well, a bit of a late start because uh, we've had to pack up and I didn't know that we had to pack up George's swag as well. Apparently, Shelley does it for him. So the young blokes have had to stop what they're doing to roll up the bloke's swag. I mean, to say it's embarrassing is just an understatement. Well, here we are right in the middle of the Victorian high country. You've got to just absolutely love it. We're down here because my mate Vic Widman from Great Divide Tours is always wrapping the place. In fact, he's always talking about how good it is and brings tours down here all of the time. He's put together some highlights for us so we can come down and check it out for ourselves, including the famous Blue Rag. We'll also go and uh, see if we can't find a drink somewhere. Apparently there's a couple of good pubs down here as well. And we'll do all of that and a whole lot more. And we'll see if Vic knows as much as he thinks he does. Pretty sure he does. Well, this will do me. Guess whose car isn't starting? Rob, what did George do to my car? Oh, oh, look, nice look, George was last seen under there somewhere with his little computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you got plugged into the car over night time, but it, whatever it is, it's flattening the battery every day. I can't tell you one, can he's got to give. Yep, Hit the button. Georgie. Oh, she's flat. She's flat. <laughs> like that. Uh, maybe it's turned on, it might go. <laughs> <laughs> We kick off our high country adventure in Omeo, head out through Mount Hotham and make our way to the Blue Rag Track, check out the forgotten towns of Grant and Talbotville, spend the night in the Dargo pub and finish up on Billy Goat Track. On this episode, I'm again joined by my young bloke Robert, who is the manager of the Oz Off-Road business, and he'll be steering his ever-reliable Oz Off-Road Ford Ranger. He's also brought along his mate Liam for a run, who we've renamed Freddie Mercury, who doubled up as our camera assist and part-time crew car driver. My old mate George from Dynamic Wilco has tagged along for the last trip in his trusty Prado, and capping off the crew is my mate Rod, co-owner of the Ilford Valley Cherry Farm in his Big 79 series. make it far this morning. Taken over the town of Omeo, become a pest, locked up the service station. Uh, so we're going to change the battery out, try to avoid this. We're off to a pretty great start, aren't we? No. <laughs> <laughs> After topping up some fuel, we blocked the servo driveway for about 20 minutes because of a camera car that just won't start. After some further testing, it turns out the battery has gone completely and we may have to give Gav a pass for this one. Rightio, Rob, give that a go. Lucky for us, the local hardware store had the right battery in stock, but forget the pass, we'll just blame him anyway. 
How are you going back there, Rocket Rod, at the back, mate? You all good? Mate, enjoying the scenery. How fabulous is this place? Yeah, it's pretty good, mate. Gonna go ahead to uh, Blue Rag now after that little camp spot last night. Can't wait to check it out. You going right back there, Robert? You and Freddie Mercury be looking forward to um, Blue Rag, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, Freddie's pretty keen to um, yeah get up to the top and see what it's all about. It's amazing how the places we've been and the amount of places we talk about, but we've never actually been in here, so this will be good. I tell you what, boys, even driving along this highway, but we're not even on the track yet. The views are just here are unbelievable, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think I'll be keeping my eyes solely on the road as much as I can. I just imagine like down here when it's full on snow, these are just big massive hills, like it's just unbelievable. It's hard to believe people can ski down them and they're that steep. Oh, George, you'd have a go, wouldn't you, George? No chance, but uh, yeah, no. I'm just picturing you on a toboggan, duck. Oh, mate, I'd create an avalanche. <laughs> You wouldn't want to be standing down the bottom waiting for me. No, but it'll be good to watch. Yeah, I'll be giving the toboggan ride a miss, I reckon. Well, after travelling about 10 k's from Mount Hotham, we turn off onto some dirt and pull up to air down the tyres for three days of fun. It's only a short 12k drive along the Dargo High Plains Road to the Blue Rag turn-off. My mate Vic Whitman advised me to drop the trailer off, so as usual I copped the tip, unhitched it and left the trailer at the bottom of the track. Listen Robert, you love this stuff mate, so you can lead the way if you want to son. Yeah that's alright, I'll be the um, little scapegoat out the front and see what it's all about. You love it mate. Yeah, she's low range right from the get go, here, so hey, hang on, I'll better do that. Yeah, definitely low, straight, straight off the road, you're right into it. That lift of wheels, 20 metres into the track. How good's that? It's probably a pretty good call leaving that trailer behind. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Straight into it. It's deceiving, isn't it? Gee, you're straight into it from the get go here. It makes you wonder what lies ahead. I reckon we're in for an absolute cracker. Well, boys, I think you'd struggle to find a better view anywhere in Australia than this one at the moment. Yeah, no, Vic was right, mate. Eh? He's on the money. She's a great spot here. This is a place everyone should see, mate. Everyone should see this. How good is the day, too? Like, it's just topped, topped off the, uh, the view. Like most tracks in these parts, Blue Rag was constructed for the purpose of logging and gold mining, and with a climb of over 1,700 metres to the top, it's fair to say that this entire area is the four-wheel drive capital of Australia. It's starting to get a fair bit steeper now, boys. Yeah, she's straight down here, isn't it? Yeah, how good is it? It looks it from the back. I think we're straight down and straight back up again. Gee, you love this stuff, don't you, son?
big flexing ram. Yeah, the ram goes all right, George, but I reckon you'll miss that Prado when you sell it. She's definitely a bit gnarly. Yeah, mate, there's this full noise coming down here. And with a quick glance on what lies ahead, we are reminded of what goes down must go up. Or is it the other way around? Anyway, you know what I mean. Jeez, this is looking pretty big here. It looks deep from the back, but it looks just as steep from the front too. It doesn't matter from where you're looking, this track is pretty steep, but I reckon the Ranger will have it covered though. That look easy, duck. You're going up there, Robert. You got a hold of it, mate. Don't let, don't let it come backwards. No, no, we're still going up. <laughs> Just keep going forward, mate. How good is it? You're looking good there, George. She's steep, mate. Slow and steady wins the race. I reckon you're on the money, Rod. I think you need to be slow and real steady. This is pretty steep with some big ruts thrown in just to make sure you stay on your toes. Well, Vic, old son, you haven't let us down here, mate. No wonder you run trips down here. Check out the views. And we aren't even at the top yet. I think we might finally be getting to the top of this hill. Have we got the views out there? I well, knew yeah, it was going to be good, but not this good. I tell you what, George, uh, we're in for a treat up here, mate. How good is it? Yeah, it's, it's words words can't describe how uh, how awesome this is, mate. Unbelievable. This track is something else and provides views that on any other day you would only get from a window seat on a plane. It's dead set like driving on top of the world. Mate Vic Widman said this was a grouse spot and he was right. He knows his stuff, Victor. It's a beautiful spot. It's it's awesome. Is it blue and is it a rag? It is it well it is a bit blue. Yeah, I wouldn't say a rag, but it does look good. Look at it, you can see everything from here. This is as good as it gets. It's certainly breathtaking stuff. Now I sort of mentioned what goes up must go down, and being a dead end track, it's time for us to double back down the way we came up. This should be a piece of cake, but by the time we make it down to the bottom, you won't believe what he's done this time. Oh shit, no, it's way badly. So tell us what's happened. So what's happened is this bent little thing here, that's meant to be a straight piece, 
connected to that. Somewhere along the line, that's snapped and taken out your CV boot, which is, I've never seen that happen, ever. Wow, but it's, it's happened. It's happened. Did you hear that noise? George yeah, broke it. That's how, that sounds beautiful. I think George made it worse. So we can't blame Gav for this one. Maybe it is, huh? It could be cursed, eh? Yeah, I take it back, man. I thought I thought it was you, Gav. Yeah. Must be the car. It's cursed, isn't it? It's cursed. I think it's Gav who's cursed. This looks to be one of his best. It helps when your young bloke is a handy mechanic. It would be a long wait for roadside assistance down here, that's for sure. What we might do is a couple of plastic bags, and just fill it up with grease, and plastic bags around the end of it, cable tie them on, maybe a few rags, make our own CV boot. No idea what you just said, but that sounds cool. Yeah. With the day getting away from us and daylight disappearing quickly, the boys disconnect the sway bar and put some cable ties to good use. Hopefully that will get us going so we can have a better look in the morning when the sun shows its face again. Well, after a frosty roadside camp in some quarry a few kilometres down the road from Gavin's handiwork location, we woke to a brisk sunny morning. Did I mention it was pretty frosty here? The repairs held up. We'll just tweak it a little bit, a few more cable ties, maybe a couple more rags and I think it should be good for a bit of the hard stuff today, but we'll have to see how we go. With the sun out, it's tools out, and the pit crew are back on the job. Oh, how's it looking? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this towel rag seems to be the best bet. Old at head bush without this, to get you out of anything. The other ones were last seen entering Georgia swag. <laughs> this is bush mechanics at its best, and not only do we need this temporary fix right for the tough tracks ahead, we need to make sure it's safe so we can do it properly once we finally get back to Oz Off-Road in a few days. But wait, we have there's again, more. The CV boot split CV on the passenger side now. That's what I bought a bed last night. You can use them for rag if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the boys have decided to remove the sway bar altogether to avoid further damage and make a better temporary CV boot with Rod's pyjama pants. Although it will be a little rough on the tracks, the boys make sure it's still safe to drive. And just like that, out comes a sway bar. Our campsite was pretty ordinary last night on the side of the road. It made for a pretty good workshop up this morning. Nice black ground. Bush mechanic, mate. You never thought you'd become a bush mechanic, did you? No. So, don't want to go off too soon. Hopefully we can get it out of here, but it should be okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to check out this graveyard that my mate Vic Woodman's told us to have a look at. And then uh, we're going to do this other track and beautiful scenery. I think everywhere you look, there's good scenery down here. So I think we're in for it today, boys. It's going to be a big one and we're off to a late start. So. We've got it all to do. As we continue along the Dargo High Plains Road, we make our way towards the historic town of Grant. We've been told to keep a lookout for grave sites just like this one that have been restored by the Harrietville Historical Society. You have to wonder though, just how many unmarked graves are out there, not just around here, but all over Australia, I reckon. As we continue on, we suddenly hit High Country Peak Hour. Here, you got a copy, Rod? Yeah, mate. 
You were saying last night around the fire that you liked that show Yellowstone, mate, so we organised this for you this morning, mate, a bit of a cattle drive here. <laughs> it reminds me exactly like it. Or well, cattle drive with a couple of drivers anyway. But, uh, mate, it's good watching them get them dogs to work. Mate, those dogs, they train them so well. Hey, Robert, I knew we should have brought Clancy down here. Yeah, and I think he'd be in his element running around with this mob. I think if you pipped your horn, it'd create some chaos. Don't rev the V8, mate. Each one looks like the other one. Oh, mate, that's one of your worst you've done. You've said fair, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, stop it, Rob. We're getting a bit low on steaks, too. Throw one of these up on your roof sock. Oh, hang on. We're a G-rated program, aren't we? We better just skip to the next scene. Neighbouring the township of Talbotville and located around 20 kilometres northwest of Dargo, Grant came into being in the late 1860s as part of the Crooked River Gold Rush. It is believed that the population at this time was around 1,200 people, which grew to as many as 2,000 over the years that followed. It's hard to believe that this place was once a thriving town with schools, shops and other businesses, although these days it's nothing more than scrub and rocks one remaining feature, though, is the Grant Cemetery. Stretched over a couple of acres, it is said that there are over 30 burial sites in the cemetery, with only two marked graves which contain headstones that are fenced off. This is certainly a very sombre place to be, and you can't escape the feeling of real Australian history when you visit here. This is an interesting place. I've just asked the boys if they wanted to camp here tonight. The answer was no. Oh well, we'll just move on then, won't we? What do you think of that place, boys? I mean, we've been to some um, ghost towns on our travels, but it's hard to believe this was actually a little town once. There's nothing left here at all. It's incredible how it just sort of moves on and disappears and yeah, it's gone. Yeah, they would have done it hard out here, mate. Imagine being out here in the middle of winter. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it. With a late start in light of our Hilux repairs this morning, we don't want the day to get away from us, so we decide to travel the 10 kilometres to Talbotville Campground. We are told that the road runs along huge drop-offs, is very narrow with no room for error, and is downhill all the way. With the camper trailer in tow, it should make things a little interesting. I tell you what, boys, there's a gnarly, narrow little track down here, but gee, the view's good out to the right, isn't it? We haven't stopped descending for the last half an hour. Drop down is crazy. Mate, she's pretty narrow, but um, mate, the views are unbelievable. Pretty spectacular. It's nice and steep there, Robert, but uh, if you run out of brakes, mate, you've got the cushion of the camper trailer, all right? Yeah, no, it's pretty strategic to be behind the heaviest car, just in case anything goes, goes a bit pear-shaped. Yeah, this trailer's not that big, but it's still pretty tight on some of these turns. It's a twisted little track. You don't want to. You don't want to stuff it up. You want to know about it. It'd wreck your day if you did stuff it up. Hang on, we've got a car coming here too. <laughs> it's hard to believe that this is actually a two-way road. Lucky for us, we are on the correct side of the road and find ourselves at a section where old mate can pass easily. We wouldn't want to be reversing out of here. Looks like George is getting his head around this swag caper. Get a little 
little bit of dust in the car. <laughs> How good is this camp spot compared to the roadside camp last night? This is more like it. What's on the menu tonight, Duck? Wallaby stew. No, not really. We are having a beef stew though. But uh, we've got the beef, we've got onions, we've got potatoes, we've got carrots, we've got a big bag of veggies that were prepared earlier by Mrs Duck. And uh, all into this camp pot, cast iron pot and then straight over to that fire, so you'll be eating well tonight, boys. Have you had your sausages thawed out for tonight? <laughs> no, I'm having cheese and crackers tonight, I think. Cheese and crackers? Hey, listen, I had, I had scotch fillet and sausages last yeah, night, yeah, and the night before. That food's obviously not good enough for him. Ah, oh, believable. That looks good enough to me. This looks good enough to eat now, we haven't put it in the pie yet. Yeah, mate, Ruthie would be proud of this, right? wouldn't he, Gav? He would. Oh, Ruthie would be all over this. So we'll see how she's going, eh? I think she's just about ready, eh? Ooh, listen to her bubbling away. Ha ha ha! There it is. You're on, boys. Look at the steam coming off it. That's the smoke from the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end a big day. A few beers and a good food around the fire with some good mates. I tell you what, this is what camping is all about. It's no wonder that the Victorian high country is on most four-wheel drivers' bucket list. I guess if I had one word to describe it, it would be majestic. Most people think of the man from Snowy River when thinking about the high country, but it's a lot more than that. Although surrounded in beautiful landscape, it's still hard country, and it's hard to believe that thousands of people once took on this rugged terrain and extreme winter weather to find their fortune. Although these days Talbotville continues to be the home of Australian cattle and possesses a great campground, it was in fact a bustling little town that sprung to life in 1866 when gold was discovered along the Crooked River. Unfortunately though, once the gold ran out, the town vanished, but as a result of the previous gold discovery not far away in Ballarat in 1851, which sparked Victoria's famous gold rush, resulted in prospectors heading to places just like Talbotville. An estimated 6,000 gold diggers arrived each week seeking their fortune. Well boys, you all survived that stew last night. How good was it? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I reckon even my mate Ruthie would have been proud of that one. But anyway, we needed our strength today. We've got a real big day ahead of us. We're just going down this little gnarly track here into a creek. So just watch yourself coming off the top of the edge there, boys. I just hit the uh, bash plates there, so just watch it. Yeah, good business. Get straight into it, straight out of camp. Yeah, I'm definitely coming back here. So the plan today, boys, we've got about oh, 24 little creek crossings to do. Good tracks, great scenery, and hopefully I'll be shouting you a beer at the Dargo pub tonight. Sounds good to me, and we're just going through the first. Oh, gee, this is pretty good here, boys, real good. Oh, holy hell, I've just um, bottomed out big time there. Just watch coming off the top, eh? But, mate, it's real good.
This is 100% high country down here. You're gonna love that one, George. Little rock step down into the river. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Love this stuff. How good is this, eh? Look at that. So I tell you what, boys, I'm not much on technology, but I'm loving this heated steering wheel. How are you going? Yeah, she's a bit fresh on mine. That's what heaters are for. Just so you know, the outside temperature's three degrees, so, uh, mate, I'm not going to turn the heated seat on. I had to turn that off, actually, because it just got a little bit too hot in here. Mate, the only luxury this 79's got is electric windows. Yeah, I'm a fair bit older than you, Blake, so I need all this stuff now, you know? I'm the youngest, and I've still got my heated seats on, if it makes you feel better. Holy Jesus, oh, I'm going down this hilly, hilly dooly. Just watch it coming down in here. With another 23 water crossings to go, and no idea what's around the next corner, I reckon we are in for a top day today. Boys, you're going to need low range getting out of this. It's, it's, um, hey, she looks like a bit of a challenge. It's muddy and slippery as too. A big wheel lift on the ram there. Yeah, I should have got um, should have got Gav to jump, drop the camera and just um, check the suspension after coming up that, eh? I don't think there's many rams doing wheel looks like that around. <laughs> That's as close as you want to go to rolling one over. Jesus. That was a bit of a lift, mate. Right, eh, Georgie boy. Show us what you got, mate. That was a mad wheel lift. Hot cup of coffee with a cigarette. Pretty little thing sitting on my hip. I'm a good old boy and a country star. No one else can go this far. Was that a good one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, boys, has anyone been keep, keeping count of these uh, little creek crossings? Yeah, I think I ran out of fingers, so it's all a mystery for me. Well, you can't count past three, George, so, I mean, that, that question didn't apply to you, mate. Yeah, that's why I didn't answer. <laughs> exactly. I, th I thought you'd got to be quiet, eh? If we look happy, we certainly are that. In fact, we are as happy as kids on Christmas morning. I don't know about you, but I love these types of tracks. Rough and slippery surfaces, rock steps, water crossings, twists and turns, all in the Aussie bush. Just how good is it? I'm just going to fill in this little little hole here. I don't know how the ram's going to go with the long wheelbase, might bottom out. A few rocks, plenty of rocks around. We should be able to, should be able to get it through. Right, so this is probably the biggest obstacle we've copped all day. Yeah, Robert, what am I going to go left or right here? To the left? Yeah, you want to put your left tire right up in that bank where we are now. I'm coming down straight, just straight along that bank. Yep, right, eh? We'll have a bit of a go. Going left. Right 
Referees off the ground for sure here. Are you sure about this? I've said it before the camera never does these types of tracks justice. It's steeper and more slippery than it looks, and things always look bigger over the bonnet of the ram. With the trailer in tow, she's hard on the brakes here. I can't go much slower, eh? Right, we're down, I think. Let's hold it there for a second. Yeah, well done, son. You've got your priorities right. Jeez, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? I'm through. Coming down. As the builder of this road, I've got nothing but nothing but confidence in it. Um, and if I sound out of breath, it's because I am. Haven't moved rocks like that. <laughs> in a while. <laughs> Here we go, first load. Stay off the brakes as so much as you can, but you can't really on a track like this. Just keep it nice and slow. Like that, yeah. Thanks, George. Okay, time for some quick road works so we can get the rest of the boys down. The sound of George's brakes resembles the sound that comes from his swag at night. Got some tunes on the way down with the brakes. You know what you're doing. Do you want me to guide you through? That was sketchy. Righto boys, I think we're coming up to the Bulltown Spur track here. And uh, just round to the right boys, this is the track that Mick was telling us about. I think she goes pretty well straight up once we sort of get on it. We just go straight up towards the sky, okay? It's pretty steep. Yeah, well, this track is between us and the pub, so I think no matter how hard it is, we'll find a way to get up it. Sounds good. We've earned our beers today. Don't worry about that, boys. She's been a bit of a challenge so far, but we've still got to get up this hill. Yeah, bring it on. We've got a bit of a hairpin here, and I've got a feeling we're just going to get stuck straight into it, eh, off the bat here. Oh, yeah, mate, we're straight into it, mate. She's straight up here, real steep. Wow. That is steep. That looks it from back here. Oh, yeah, straight into it. You don't need to go 100 mile an hour on a track like this. Just low range, first, second gear, just cruise. If we keep heading in this direction, I'm tipping we'll be camping on the moon tonight. Either that, or we'll at least drive into a satellite. Oh, hang on, this is looking real ordinary here. I don't know how I'm going to get around this. Hang on. I'm going to have to go out wide towards the edge of the cliff here. And, <laughs> oh, mate, get around, get the trailer around. Hang on. Yeah, this is pretty tight. Gee, I'm, I'm glad I've got the caravan on this trip. Would be dead set impossible. Just gonna make sure I'm in uh, low range first gear here. Right, oh boys, here we go. I should be able to get the trailer around now. God, this ram can do it. It's unbelievable. Capable four wheel drive, this I can tell you. Nice and tight around there, George, isn't it? Wasn't too bad in the little Prado, mate. You gotta remember the ram's a pretty big vehicle. Well the front of the car is in a different postcode, so you get that.
What do you reckon, boys? The sun's come out just in time for us to get a little of that view on the right-hand side. How good is it outside the window, eh? Yeah, the spur track's bringing out its best. It's a long way down, eh, George? I think that's all I can see, straight down. This track's got its challenges, but it's got its rewards, I can tell you. It's just unbelievable. This is a cracking track, an absolute cracker. And after 24 water crossings, tight turns, makeshift roads, steep climbs with the odd wheel lift thrown in, we are back on the Dargo High Plains Road. Next stop, the Dargo Pub. You beauty. Dargo is a must for anybody heading to the Victorian high country. It has a great general store, fuel, accommodation, and of course, the famous Dargo Hotel. It's actually known though for its groves of century old walnut trees that line the valley floor. Many high country cattlemen live in the area as it's a premium stock breeding and agricultural district. But for most, the big attraction is the pub, and I'm looking forward to the odd cold one with my old mate Hawley, who not only runs the Dargo Hotel, he's also the unofficial mayor of the town itself. So mate, here we are in your pub. Mate, how long you own this pub? Oh, we owned it 94 to 2000. Then we give it all away and we brought it back seven years ago last Easter. Fair thing, and what made you buy it back? Oh, just a um, iconic joint and bought it back pretty cheap and I thought, well, bugger, I'll make a few bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, why not? <laughs> Are you always from this area? Oh, born here, lived here the first four years of my life. Yeah. And then we moved away with my parents, so I had to, because I wasn't old enough to survive here. Yeah. And uh, come back and uh, continued on. Mate, it's a great pub. It's full of the Aussie character. It's yep. just one of those pubs that stand out. Like, we've been to a few. Yep. And you trip over places like this, it's almost, it is an iconic pub, isn't it? It's one of the most famous pubs in Australia, really. Everybody loves it. It is one of those famous pubs. Uh, next door in the lounge there used to be six bedrooms, four bath, uh, two bathrooms. Got it all up. More room for the lounge, we need more room for people to have meals here and stuff. Built the cabins outside and then the campgrounds there. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's a pretty iconic joint now. It's an amazing place and I think it's on everybody's bucket list of one of those destinations. Everyone talks about Cape York, the Flinders, but the Victorian eye country, she's something special. Would you ever see yourself in Melbourne or Sydney? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't think so. Um, yeah, went a couple of trips down Melbourne and uh, oh, the best thing was in the rear vision mirror on the way home. <laughs> Mate, thanks for hospitality. We love it. The Dargo pub. Mate, what a great spot. Yep, we're open for business. Get your bum here. Good on you, mate. Good on Cheers. you, mate. Cheers, mate. Good on Cheers, you. Cheers, matey. I've been to some great pubs in me day, and this one is a dead set cracker. The best thing about places like this are the characters you meet, and Hawley is right up there with the best of them. Old school Aussie culture, it's still alive and kicking in Dargo, that's for sure. One of the rags has come off our CV makeshift boot. So we've got another one, and we're just going to try to do it really, really good this time. Gee, you got to give it to the boys. They've kept this thing going with some old school bush mechanics, that's for sure. This is engineering brilliance. <laughs> Here's a tip don't leave home without 100 mile an hour tape, cable ties, grease, and a bag full of rags. Hey, boys, it was good to get out of the bush last night, wasn't it, and have a night in the pub? What a great place. I appreciated that shower too, I can tell you. Tell you what, the food was great as well. Yeah, well, I mean, Liam, the uh, camera assistant, he certainly uh, could attest to the food, he ate anything on the menu. Liam, the bottomless pit. Billy Gates today, boys. We're going to have a look at that, eh, before we get out of here. Can't wait. I reckon we've left the best to last. Yeah, she'll uh, be a bit of a challenge, I reckon, talking to a couple of the locals here, so we'll go and have a look at it anyway. Billy Goat Bluff Track, commonly known as Billy Goats, is about 40 k's from Dargo. They say that this track is as tough as it gets, and to add to the challenge, our mate Vic Whitman tells us that the track is in need of urgent repair and not to proceed past the trick point. 
This was also confirmed by locals we spoke to in the pub last night, and a couple of blokes told us they actually broke three four-wheel drives on the track last week. I reckon we're in for it here, but we decide to stroll out there and have a look for ourselves. Well, boys, here we are, our last track of the trip, Billy Gates. So, uh, Robert, this is your track, son, so you can lead the way, mate. Yeah, I'm happy to be the guinea pig on the harder tracks, but um, uh, real keen for this one, and I think it could be a bit of a challenge. Yep, yeah, looking forward to this one. I've heard a bit about it, so let's see how we go. I've been on the track for about 30 seconds and we're straight up into it. Oh, yeah, you're not wrong here, fair income. You excited up there, Robert? Bumpy as anything. I reckon this is going to be a good one. We're able to that trailer down the bottom, eh? Yeah, good call. That looks average from back here. It's a little bit rutted too, so you want to pick your line pretty good. It is bumpy, jeez. I like it for this one. Ooh. Got it. Fair dinkum, if this is the easy bit, we are in for one hell of a ride here today. Beep that out, Gav. Second gear low, just trying to cruise, but again, it's bumpy. And soft, it's like sand up here. There's no room for error here. So far, so good, but little did we know, our day was about to change. There seems to be some sort of issue with the ram, with the engine continually shutting off. What do you think's happened? I think it might have picked up a bit of dirty fuel. We thought it was the steepness of the track that was making it cut in and out, but now it's sitting here on the flat and playing up a little bit. Oh, yeah, she's not happy. This stops, mate. I'm f this is a real drama. Although the gearbox on the ram automatically shifts to park and pulls on the handbrake, it still won't be enough to stop it from sliding. The track surface is loose and of course very steep and you don't want to be free sliding down here. With the chance of having no low range for traction, we decide to turn it around and throw George's winch cable on and sneak our way back down the hill. Want me to jump back in? No, no, I'm young, dumb and full of confidence. So yeah. I'm going to have a crack. <laughs> Alright, have I'll fun. Like... So slow. <laughs> Yeah, yep. I always want a bit of right hand down. Yep. That feels horrible. <laughs> I go full lock. With us turned around, hooked up and ready to go, I swap seats with the young bloke and get ready for the long trip down the hill. We did tip a jerry can of fuel into the ram this morning that we've had on the back. Not for that long, but we did pick it up when we were out western New South Wales. We are thinking that maybe there could be a bit of a problem with that fuel. This was certainly not in the plan for today, but with little to no other choice, we make our way straight down. Better hold on to me, George. We're pretty good mates, you know. They're yeah, just nice and slow. It's going to take all the years of experience that George and I have mustered to get this done safely. Gee, fair dinkum, this is an absolute big worry. 
Yeah, that's perfect, mate. She's super sketchy, eh? Oh, mate, this is ludicrous. Nah, your mouth stuff is, isn't it? Mm. This is real dicey, eh? Did you guys fit an ejector seat? Because I've got one ready to go. <laughs> and just to make things a little bit more difficult, we now have an oncoming four-wheel drive heading straight towards us. George must be hanging on, he didn't answer me coming up. <laughs> I don't give too many tips, but here's one tip, if you're not experienced, don't come here. Well, folks, unfortunately, that is a wrap on this trip. Not what we planned to end it this way, but all in all, though, it's been quite an amazing trip. We've had a good time, haven't we, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we heard our young camera assistant here, who's been a big help to us as well. A massive thank you to Vic Woodman, the owner operator of Great Divide Tours. Uh, you can check him out, 4wd.net.au, or just Google Great Divide Tours, you'll find him. Just remember, we do build your four-wheel drives for this sort of adventure, so you need to check us out at ozoffroad.com.au. We're open in Penrith, we're open in Port Macquarie, so you can find our shops uh, right there. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, just go to Oz Off Road TV on YouTube. And remember, the adventure starts when you turn the curtain the ignition. We'll be back down here to finish this trip and maybe check a few other things out as well. But in the meantime, that is all from us here at Oz Off Road TV from the Victorian High Country. We'll see you next time. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>